Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Well, welcome to my channel if this is your first time being here. Thank you for being here. Um, make sure you subscribe if you want to continue receiving these types of videos. And because there is a lot of new things coming. So today we are going to be talking about Pluto going direct. This is the last planet in Capricorn that has been retrograde for some time. So to talk a little bit about Pluto, first let me get into this really quickly. Um, so I'm going to be talking about Pluto going direct for each sign. If I'm, I'm not going to talk about the houses because I'm going to be more focused on pulling on cards and connecting with spirit for our answers. And yeah, so if you would like to find out what house this is in for you, if you can go back and watch the Saturn Gone Direct video, I'll talk about that. Um, the houses, it's the same houses for each sign with Saturn and Pluto because they're both in Capricorn. Granted, unless um, you, so for sure if you're using whole house astrology, but sometimes there are houses that have more than one sign, so these planets might be in a different house for you. And that's another reason why I really just want to stay focused on the reading, on the cards, um, because it, you know, just let the flow of things happen. So... That's the reason, main reason why I just kind of want to stick to hard reading and not focusing so much on the astrology aspect outside of talking and sharing about what is in and sharing more about Pluto in general being in Capricorn all this time. So it's very interesting. Pluto is the planet of. Well, hers is the ruler of Scorpio and the ruler of the ice eighth house. So this has to do a lot with intimacy. It has to do with shared resources and transforming and things being revealed to us, things that have kind of been hidden out of a taboo nature or even just that one thing that, oh, we don't talk about that, not necessarily because it's taboo, but, but well, taboo is forbidden in a sense. You know, this is about secrets, it's about banks, loans, other people's money, making money through other people. Um, this can be the people that you work for. This is about uh, the intimate relationships that are sexual and platonic. You know, this is about fears and, and secrets, if I didn't say that already. This is occult energy. This is about suspicion and deception and um, investigation and devotion and discipline. You know, it's about ancestral things. And it's about ancestral things and what doesn't die. The things that we hold within ourselves that aren't directly that don't directly belong to us so basically things that have been passed down to us from our families and you know they may not necessarily mean something to us in this timeline right so this can be something that happened back when you were a child kind of thing that that type of it's, it's karma power struggles um this is where those really deep emotions lie. This is the planet that governs that, that only with doing the shadow work will you be able to unearth what it is that this actually means. You know, what it is that this actually means for you, what it manifests. Well, a lot of times with Pluto, we can recognize where certain patterns in our life are manifested based out of the hidden nature that these uh, that this specific type of perception 
cultivates within us, you know, and a lot of times we can take a look at our family lineage, you know, and recognize and see through them what it is we're holding on to, what it is that we are experiencing and dealing with, and within the cure, within the the sickness, the illness, the problem, the solve is always there. The anesthetic is always there. You are your healer to be able to move through things. And sometimes Pluto is that planet that kind of needs a sort of facilitation if you are not, if you tend to be the type to not be honest with yourself about things, how it is that you're truly feeling about something, you know, and, and kind of suppressing it, right? Because that's what Pluto does. It suppresses the darkness out of, and, and that's how the shadows are created, out of wanting to hide it, out of not wanting to be vulnerable, not wanting to be seen. You know, but this is why Pluto also represents intimate relationships because that is the place where these things come undone. You know, that is the place where... Everything that has kind of, we could say, manifested in your life um, beyond your control has come from. It can also be a fourth house matter, but it was 12th house, but this eighth house situation, you can look more towards the, the people that you come from, from where these types of debts are coming from, whether or not they are of money, emotion, spirit, pattern. Karma is a debt, you know, and, and karma is simply based in things that we continue to experience out of not wanting to let go of some aspect of ourselves that continues to create these issues, these problems, these less than desirable experiences in our life that serve us no justice, right? So the eighth house, Scorpio, it comes after the justice, right? It, it comes in to show you the root of what was found out during the trial of Libra, of Venus, the fairness, the justness, the balance. So with Pluto being in Capricorn, this has had to, all of these attributes of this energy have been placed on Capricornian nature of things. So this is about structures. This is about government. This is about um, success and achievement and being seen who we are seen as. This is like the law and the details and being organized and the, the, the solid foundation Um And everything that tied into that, this is also those, because Capricorn is, is the devil, right? So this has even more depth when it comes to that shadow aspect of the self, right? It's about that prison that we've locked ourselves into, but the door is open. The door is unlocked. If it is closed, it's unlocked, and all we have to do is move through it, right? But this is it's so, such a strong undercurrent of subconscious patterns that continue to arise, that continue to come up, that manifest these situations is almost hard to grasp and to take hold of, right? Because when it comes to patterns and emotions and mental thought, when it comes to Capricorn, it's very easy for them to just push it to the side because they know that the work needs to be done. It's easier to focus on that and to deal, that, deal with that later more so in their private time. But in reality, sometimes it's someone that needs to be talked to in order to really dig through the layers that have been built up in regards to this Capricornian energy, especially with this Pluto influence. So... With this, what's interesting is this is the past couple of years as Pluto has been in these 20th degrees, America has been going through its Pluto return. So when a planet comes back to return, this is basically a, a reckoning, basically, of seeing 
where wrong turns were taken. Did you do this right in order to receive the benefits of what is to come now, or do you still have work to do? And with all the things that have been going on in America, we see that we have done a lot, but we still have so much work to do. So many secrets are being revealed, so many deep, dark, taboo subjects are being revealed to us, are being brought to light on the, in the mainstream. You know, this is because Pluto is also the planet of sex. You know, so it's been a lot of this, this, this dark sex culture that's coming to light here, and also just within the structures of our government and how these things are not operated. And we're recognizing this through the presidency that's going on right now because so many different things are being revealed to that. You know, and and just so many things are are crumbling. We are in this power moment here in America, and you know, it's just been for a lot of people. I know that's been difficult to deal with because from the you know the COVID and then all the stuff going on in the news, finding out all these things about these higher ups and all of this this human trafficking and just how we we are revealing these things are being revealed to us and we also are recognizing our own personal nature and how possibly these things have been implemented into our family line into us personally and kind of seeing how this has created our reality as of now Right, because this is also the structures of the family that's that's coming apart, undone on a personal level. Maybe even things have been changing in the structures of your family. May have been a lot of death of people who really held it down, held the family down, you know, and um, kind of brought forth that really intimate bond with everyone. And just many, many things that we have not been aware of as a collective, as on a personal scale. And these things are just happening to free us, to allow us to be in our space of be able and being able to really make a choice and having the freedom to make a choice. That's why it's so important to really pay attention to what's going on so that you are aligning to the people who really um, speak to your values, to your views. So if you're not aware of that, like that, that can be something that may be causing a lot of chaos in your life based off of lies, because Pluto is about deceit, you know, um, and Capricorn is about uh, the basically the top dog. You know, who is that going to be and who is serving the best in being that, really? So, well, I also want to talk about Pluto will be, it's, it's in this square to Mars. So, this is, right now Mars is in retrograde, right? So, Pluto has gone direct. So, this means that there's forward movement now being had on being able to live out basically all the ways that we have seen we kind of letting go of the trash to start over clean renew transform you know in a new sense of being self you know but that's going to take time and this is kind of like that energy of going somewhere deeply desired but slowly you know it's it's going to take its um, Pluto is like, I think it's transited every 28 years or something like that. I can't be certain at this moment. But most definitely, um, once uh, Mars goes direct, we will see more movement and more action. So things are definitely moving in the direction that we want them to. It's just a matter of staying present and choosing and being okay with going with the flow, being okay with not knowing. Um, 
all the Pluto wants to know is going to do the work of trying to figure it out. So maybe use that energy instead of continuing to dive deep in itself, right? And this Mercury retrograde that's coming up this month is definitely going to help with that. That's going to offer us a lot of revelation in regards to this Pluto energy. But I would talk about that when we get to Mercury retrograde. So in that video will be next week, I believe. I think so. So then it's also in this aspect, this really harmonious aspect with Neptune, right? But Neptune is also in retrograde. So this is a lot of, Neptune is also about things that are hidden out of, out of illusion, you know, people or, you know, this sense of glamour, not really dressing something up to not see what's really there, what's really underneath, you know? So with Neptune here, this is basically a work of being called to do whatever work it is when it comes to seeking the clarity that is needed to manifest those unconditional, intimate, long-lasting relationships, dreams, finances, you know, spirituality, work, career, public image um, type of things. We may also, once the Neptune goes by risk, we may find ourselves, um, we may find ourselves experiencing a lot of, I mean, it's wild already in reality, but these government revelations, once Neptune go to, goes direct, are going to be like uh, some fantasy game stuff. Like, is this real? Is this a sci-fi movie kind of thing? You know, and right now we are having a lot of media that's out there that's really revealing a lot of things like recently i just watched this show on netflix called evil and this show is broadcasted on cbs this is national television that you don't need cable for it and all the stuff that they put in this show i mean i guess it's if you know it's a if you know thing but um it's really like it's really horrific for it to be on national television like that but um, it speaks a lot to the reality that is existing that we're not aware of. Very interesting. So it's also in, in conjunction to the North Node. And the North Node in Gemini is exalted, right? And it's exalted there because Gemini is it, it, relatable. You know, it's about making the connections, connections with others, but also these connections in our perception, right? This is uh, how it is that we need to view, how we need to see, how we need to think, how we need to feel about moving forward towards our destiny. What is it going to take to get there? And this is basically offering us uh, the opportunity to integrate recent fundamental transformation that really helps support us in reaching this destiny. Like it was, it's like that Pluto, this Pluto Capricorn energy is like the deep work on top of the North Node in Gemini energy, which is like light work, really like literally light work. So this these things may come to in regards when in relation i should say to connections to family siblings your perspectives on life your relationships your networking your media your social media your children's education your childhood education you know you may have seen like oh well my childhood education didn't really do anything for me oh well hey i need to do something different for my child education that a lot of that is going on right now with the whole COVID stuff and them changing so much of the dynamics with um public school and just school in general college I know my my little brother he goes to well not little brother he's younger than me my younger brother is in college and you know he goes to a university 
everybody is doing online, you know, so that is definitely a shift in that, especially with the South Node being Sagittarius, which is a higher education and university thing, all of that. So with that whole King Kong's energy, this is really bringing forth that, that depth of perspective with that um, everyday perspective that we hold and really allowing us to have a richer view of life in general. So that is the breakdown of Pluto in Capricorn. And we're going to get to the signs and pull some cards. So I'll be right back. So we're going to start off with energy. First, I want to say that on Instagram, I um, was that last year? No, that was earlier. Was that that was in February? On my Instagram page, I made um, I pulled cards for Pluto and Capricorn conjunction that we were experiencing, and I know a lot of that energy may be it maybe on its way to be manifesting to us it's still probably not going to have any real effect until the end of the year but we'll still be seeing some movement in the area of what it is that we were desiring you know because that we were willing to put the work into <clears throat> so the first card we are going to talk about the first sign of course is Aries. I'm gonna pull two oracle cards and two tarot cards for each sign. Aries is so Aries what Pluto Doris is asking you, inviting you to is to now get grounded. Right, so now you've kind of seen what has been in your way and worked in a sense your way through it. But now that you're on this route to this new place, to this new way of perceiving things, going about things, it's time to get grounded in that. So, possibly getting out, connecting with nature, doing some uh, barefoot walking on the grass, sitting outside in the sun if that's available to you just sitting out with the trees wow yeah because it's basically your time to shine right because you got get grounded and then you got the sun the sun came out as i was saying that you know so it's really the space for you to really show up as yourself be you do you in your truth you know, get grounded in that, get sure in that, get stable in that so that you can radiate that light within and share that with others. Whether it is that thing, it, it can, it's however, however you choose to show, you share that with others, it's right. You know, it doesn't, whether that's just on an everyday, day-to-day -day basis with people, with people who work with you, with your children, with your spouse, with your friends, or however, you know, because for you, it's all about being seen in your public image, how other people view you, but also about work, any type of work thing it is that you've been doing or waiting on or expecting, like, that energy, whatever it was, it isn't anymore, and the light has returned, coming out of the darkness. Yeah, King of Pentacles and the Six of Swords. So... King of Pentacles and the Six of Swords, this is basically saying that you are transitioning into this space here, coming out of this uh, confusing mind space that was keeping you from being able to be in this grounded space of the King of Pentacles, this very practical nature of achieving your goals and going about making things happen for yourself and having really the reality, because Pentacles are are about what's real, the earth, you know, it's, um, I also want to say maybe getting into some type of writing, whether that is just some type of journey.
journaling or some type of uh, sharing your mind with others, blogging, I don't know, some way that you are maybe utilize it for a way that you're seen by others, you know, and with this Get Grounded card, Aries, we are extremely sensitive people. Although Aries come off kind of hard or, you know, not necessarily standoffish because they love to interact with people, but can be in a sense like nothing bothers them. In reality, they're very sensitive people. I know when I was a little girl, it didn't take much to make me cry. <laughs> so, Aries, I hope that that was helpful. We are going to move on to the Taurus. So, Taurus. And if it was helpful, please let me know in the comments below. How so? Taurus. So for you, Taurus, it's time for you to establish better boundaries, especially around your mind, your mental state, um, and what it is that you believe for your own life and being in that. Being, you know, it's you've gone through figuring it out, <clears throat> whatever is best aligned with you. And now you need to either unbind yourself from some box that you put yourself in or put up some boundaries in protecting yourself when it comes to your own personal beliefs. All right. So that can be muting people on social media who, um, who trigger you in some way that makes you go against yourself. This can be... Uh, not answering the phone, taking meeting your schedule so you can't be reached or can only be reached at a certain time. Yes, because you have completion, that old way of going about things is completely over. It's the number nine ending cycles and this Pluto energy is in your ninth house. So <clears throat> like that old <laughs> those old beliefs are taking you letting go of those old beliefs and Align you to something that more works, more flows with where it is that you're trying to go, where you're going, is, is basically going to take you in a new direction. So the old way of life that you've been living is no longer something brand new is coming. You know, you are really cutting, you have cut the cord, you know, you've seen, literally seen the light in the darkness is where you really see. So, say what you want, but in the darkest, the brightest star, you know, so, and you have recognized, it feels like that you've seen that you are that in your world, in your life, and it's really time to um, embody that, to get into yourself, right? Right? Very independent nature towards kind of doing your own thing. It's important that you live up to that. Start at going about uh, activating any ideas that you have been having and starting and putting some action towards it. You know, this is about doing things your own way and also receiving a harvest for all the work it is that you have been putting in through your will. You know, this is something that you're going to continue to move forward with and continue to activate, continue to, like, really be grounded in your emotional body <clears throat> so that you can have a clear state of mind of where it is you're going, you know, because it, it has to be stable. It has to be practical. It has to be... Um, it has to be in a way that ensues progress, and that can only happen through the activation of your will, motivating yourself. Do things that keep you in a state of motivation as well. Uh, 
try to stay away from things, this is that boundary. Stay away from things that deplete you. Stay away from people that deplete you. If people, if the people in your life don't bring you um, any kind of well, anything, you know, then you may need a break from them because where you're going, um, you can't really take anyone with you anyway. No one's going with you except those who are already around you. You know, this is not somewhere, <clears throat> this is not a place that people can just hang out. You're not um, moving into this space of having lackluster relationships and relationships that do not offer you any type of sustenance, any type of benefit. I don't want to say, that, not saying this in like an opportunist kind of way but if they ain't bringing the goods they can go home basically that's really what that is it's just you know you gotta be true to you being your truth whatever that looks like for you so of course i hope that that was helpful if so let me know in the comments and i'm looking forward to seeing what you have to say up to Gemini. <laughs> Gemini, Gemini. Pluto. What inside guidance and spice do you have for Gemini? Gemini. So Gemini, it seems like you need to adopt in a very unconditional, warm-hearted sense of expression and being for yourself and the people who you connect with so that you can be in a space with these people that allows you to lay the foundations necessary for the plan that is that you and the creator have for your life. It's basically time for you to take heed, you know, and lay the steps and move forward. This is, you know, with the people who are close with you, with your finances, you know, with who it is to just that you are, what it is that you were aligned to, being in your truth and standing in that. Right? So you are basically, you have something, this plan, these foundations that you're laying, it basically is something that feeds others, that nourishes others. You got the corn, you got the tin, new beginning, something brand new is happening for you with relationships and your work experience. And who, who you've known yourself to be all this time is something, something very nourishing to you right but also something very that that you're going to be able to share with others that'll be able to it's almost like what you have within you now after all of this time is it allows you to feed the nation right because this is just that good it's just that um that substantial you know after a lot of a long time of a pause, it seems, of feeling like yourself, feeling at home in you, you know, and maybe that's what this is about, you sharing with others what that was like for you, what that time of pause meant for you after all this time, right, because you're manifesting where it is that you really, truly want to go? The devil, right, has moved through like these chaotic energies that tend to overthrow you in a way that seem to always negate the experiences that you want in your life, you know? But you have done the work, you know? You've done the work. You've tended to the fields. You've plowed. You've watered. You've nurtured. You have pull the weed, right? And this is moving you forward to what it is that you want to build almost to the fourth 
page. This is the this is the three of wands, page of wands, the same thing. Um, and that's one step before the four. And it's gonna take some more action. This devil card, right? After you have finally let yourself go, let yourself free from this prison of woe is me, I'm never gonna have, or that energy of always just not taking life seriously in a way, like throwing it away on fun times, good times, instead of focusing it here on what's being able to be built. But that that lower vibration of the devil energy is moving. It's it, it's out the way so that you can really manifest that higher octave of the devil energy, which is everything, all things in your physical reality. <clears throat> this is 15, 6. Yeah, so 6 is about commitments, you know, it's about um, foundations, it's about harmony and feeling balanced within yourself, you know, and that's where that whole unconditional love here with this integral mother and Jesus comes in and also making sure that you are taking the steps to lay the plans for the long-term life it is that you want because these shifts are coming in and they're going to continue to do so over time. You know, and this may be something you are about to share with others that you're going to be either teaching. This can also have a lot to do with a lot of Capricorn energy here. Um, something of traditions, right? Because this Pluto is happening, energy is in your eighth house. And that's of uh, intimate bonds. And um, it's also a house of marriage of other people because it's shared resources, people that you buy things with, you know, people that you put your name on contracts with, you know. So, if I'm not, I hope that was helpful. Please let me know in the comments how. And I look forward to seeing what it is that you have to share. Don't forget to to the channel if you haven't already. Now we are off to Cancer. Cancer, Cancer, my watery, but grounded Cancer. Spirit, what? Spirit, Pluto, what guidance, insight do you have to share with Cancer for Pluto Direct? So whatever you're doing right now, you need to wait. It's not, may not necessarily, it's not a no. You just need to take a break from whatever it is that you've been putting the work into. Because you have to give the time to transform in a sense. Like you have to let spirit come in and do its work. Don't wear yourself thin to burn out, you know. Let's see. Completion. It's almost like you are very focused on your life's work, trying to get, get to an end goal. But it's almost... It feels like you need to enjoy the journey of where things are taking you because you got towards like towards you got completion, right? So it's like something wants to end, something or maybe something needs to end first before you can move forward into that yet. Use what it is that you already have available to you right now. So that you are not reaching for what is not ripened yet. You have to it, allow things time to build so that they can begin, you know, so that they can eventually take off cancer. Yeah, get some 
here in your truth, really. Because you got the Four of Pentacles and the Nine of Swords. So don't stop moving forward in your truth. But don't feel like that you have to wear yourself out, that you have to wear yourself thin in order to manifest what it is that you're trying to make happen, the security that you're trying to bring forth to yourself, right? Don't allow your ego to push you forward in a way that is going to have you moving too quickly, that you miss the details. This may also be speaking about getting clearer and having more clarity on the steps it is that you actually need to take when it comes to attaining that financial security that you may need or looking for, especially when it comes to work matters. There's some type of genius that you are missing in yourself. Out of trying to stay so focused on the cards that you already have in your hand, right? You know, sometimes it's like we could be so focused on one thing that we're missing something that might be a little bit swifter, a little bit easier, a little bit breezier, right? And that's probably why you need to take a break during this time. Let me pull... I need a little clarification. Okay, clarification. Six of Pentacles. So the Six of Pentacles is speaking, perhaps she needs to. Do things more from a space. Hmm. Don't give out more than you are actually receiving back. Because that when we when we do that, we throw things off balance, right? We we have to keep things reciprocal in order for like the energy must be exchanged in order for the ebb to continue to flow. Right. Give things time to get better for you so that you can get more it seems secure in yourself so that you can receive what it is that you need to receive from others and what it is that you're offering to another person, to other people, or whoever, and try to not be so focused on it's like you have a lot to offer but there is something else that needs to be seen oh my god for cancer queen of wands yeah so hmm this has a lot to do with ego and a lot to do with inspired action all at the same time. So it's kind of like don't move in the space that you're operating from ego, right? Because things are still transforming for you. Things are still changing. It's important to effectively utilize whatever it is that you already have available to you right now and pay attention so that when it's time to take that action you can do that instead of you know don't try to force anything let it be light let it flow No incompletion. Chiron, yeah. Oh, okay. So there's still some some healing that needs to happen with you. And that is why this this is saying no, not right now. 
Not right now. Take your time. Postpone things. It's almost like don't start something new right here in this moment. Wait for the go. Pay attention to when God is speaking to you. And in the meantime, focus on what is available to you right now. Because right now in this present moment is when you create everything it is that you want. And that's how you create space for more things to come about from that. Maybe focusing on what needs to be done in the home before anything. And tentacles, yeah. So this is a this is a lot about family for you, a lot about home, um, uh, wounds that have been, but also about finances, you know, in kind of receiving the bag from the work it is that you're putting in. But it's almost like okay, you need to be paying attention to what is being shown to you. Continue for it, yes. But don't get so caught up in trying to create something new that you overlook the small things that still need to be acknowledged, that need to be released. Focus on what's available to you. Use that to create right here, right now. So whatever you have at this moment to utilize that is of a practical nature, which means that it's already, you already have it, do that. That's what needs to be done right now, not focusing on new things. In the meantime, plan, let, plant the seeds, you know, let those things ripen, but don't invest so much energy into them that they create some type of wounded, some type of hardship for you, where you feel like that, um, You've tried something again and it's not working out. It's not that it's not working out. It's just that you still have things right here, right now that you've already started that need to be completed before you can go on to a new thing. Okay, Cancer. I hope that was helpful. Please let me know in the comments. You're the only card sign so far that, that received those all those pulls, so... I hope that that was helpful. Um, you know, focus on balance and harmony within yourself, taking care of yourself, getting well, if that's a thing. Um, you know, all of those things and, and build on top, on top of everything. You know, plant the intention to water the fruit so that when you come back to it, it's ready to be harvested and handed out to others or just enjoy it by yourself or whoever's around you. So, okay, Cancer, let me know if that was helpful. Leo, we are off to Leo's. My current page is Leo's. Spirit, Leo, what do you have for Leo inside guidance? Direction, correction. What do you have for Leo spirit? So Leo, this is really about all the service it is that you know it's time for you to get out there and do you really share your channeling abilities of the things that have come in and helped you and really allowed you to harness what it is or where it is that you've arrived to now. You know, you're doing, you're in a new space, birthing a new age, really getting things going for yourself. You know, you've been through a lot because this Capricorn energy is in the sixth house for you. So sixth house is about it's really, it's about other people, but it's also about the self and how we um, think about the self, receive about self, love ourselves, you know, in all that we put into being that in the service. And it's, it's really the house that we go to fill our cup, you know, so, and now it's time for, if you've been filling your cup, it's time for you to share that with others. 
We had a few that creating, double mission, channeling, and uplifting humanity. So through your experiences, you are channeling, you're uplifting through this together sharing of this. Okay. Okay, Leo. So you got the blade and the sweat lodge. So the blade basically speaks about wielding your blade swiftly and effectively. This is about doing away with old things that no longer support you, no longer serve you. This is about allowing the blade to also guide you. Let me read a little bit about this card here. One moment. Okay, so the blade is about taking decisive action. It's time to step up and step out, you know, really be in this space of not wasting any more time, basically, not living aimlessly or idly. It's a step, you know, it's about commitment. What are you going to commit to? You know, you have gone through the cycles and it's just time to start acting on that, recognizing that it's time to, it's time to show up and, and shine and be seen and, and help others, be there for others in that loving Leo way that you do so well, you know, and it's also in the event that you have been holding on to things still, there's something that's still being channeled through you. Don't use your blade in a way that creates more discord in your life. So not using it angrily and cutting off people in a way that is detrimental to the relationship that has been built. And just wait, you know, and let go Let go of anything that no longer serves, no longer that just seems that's toxic for you. Everything was toxic for you may not be toxic for another person, you know. So the sweat lodge, it's time to go within, you know, and really bring that out, Um And continue to let whatever is surfacing to emerge so that you can release it. Because this is what's being channeled. The, the, the depths of you, all these experiences that you've had within your life, you know, and it's coming forward, right? Because Pluto, oh, okay, so Pluto is in your sixth house, this, but this is about fourth house matters. This is about um, heritage you know, what it is that you've experienced and recognized through the influence that you were brought up under your family. Um, things when it comes to your relationship with your mother or being a mother, things of that nature, you know, and, and, and seeing these things and sharing these things with people so they too can receive some type of release from your experience. This is also talking about receiving a second chance, right? So this is a 54-9. Again, more cycles ending. Things are ending, right? It's um, about the mother, mother Earth calling you into her womb and inviting you to incubate as long as you need for spiritual rebirth. Give yourself time to be with darkness. Your fears, your pain, your seeds, your beautiful potential until you come out of the other side free, wise, and free of Full of creativity, and what I'm seeing is that that is you may have already experienced that, and if you have not experienced that, this this retrograde, this the 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 energy going direct is basically sharing with you the ability to do these things, to see these things, to release these things, to no longer hold on to these you know old habits, beliefs these diseases, you know,
You've, you know, you've healed. You've done a lot of healing with this sweat lodge energy. Let's pull these tarot cards for you. Okay, so you got the moon card, so you're moving forward into a space where you're headed, maybe you're feeling really unclear for you right now, you know, it's almost like you just need to trust the process, because don't deceive yourself in thinking that you're doing the wrong thing, because you're not, you're getting a second chance to redo whatever it is that you had done before that didn't work out how whatever relationships you're getting a second chance to do that in a new way whatever connections whatever routines whatever habits whatever um ways that you have utilized to build up your home your health your hurt that is the mask off of all of that those things are being revealed however you know, you may have received some type of insight during this past full moon in Aries, especially in regards to yourself, how you have been deceiving yourself, right? Because that Aries full moon was conjunct Chiron, and that's about healing, right? And this sweat lodge card as well, the, the moon only rises in the darkness. You know, so in only in the darkness can you see the brightest star. So you are coming to this place of, or in this place of just being very tapped into your inner world, your inner emotions, your intuition, and letting that really guide you in moving in a way that deflects any type of chaos within yourself and within others, any type of competition, right? It's like the competition is, is now dead because you see yourself so clearly that it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing because you know what you're doing now. You know, you it's like, oh, I know who I am. After all this time, like you're finally in your space of authority you know, and feeling comfortable and confident and operating in that. Now, if you are in still some space of competition, some space of discord when it comes to interacting with other people, when it comes to the work that you're doing, know that you are deceiving yourself and it's not real. It's just you and you're projecting. So, whatever that means for you, take that however you need that. <clears throat> In the meantime, go into the sweat lodge, go into the darkness and deal with your shadows that are still there. Set you up some type of spiritual practice, get closer to God, get closer to spirit, connect with your ancestors. However, you do your spiritual thing. And if you don't have a spiritual thing, find that. Do that daily, every day. And God, don't not wake you up every day. So, commune with the higher every day, all right? So, let's see, Leo. I hope that that was helpful. We are going on to our Virgo. Virgo, Virgo. And Leo, if that was helpful, please let me know in the comments. Virgo, spirit, what do you what like to say? Virgo, I'm meticulous. Getting shit done. Don't tell it like it is. Virgo. 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 <clears throat> what are you afraid of? Step into your truth. It's time to step into your truth. Release the fear. You know, this retrograde was supposed to help you recognize your fears. Now it's time to move through them. You have your sort of truth. Walk in your truth. Be in that. You know, focus on the things that make you happy and do that. 
don't allow anybody else, any outside noise to encourage you to do anything other than what it is that you want to do, right? Be bold, be courageous. Be sure that you're sure, you know, because you're sure the once you believe that you're sure. All right, so you got the hummingbird. So this basically is saying, like, it's time to take action. You are in control of everything in your life. And so as long as you so believe it, like it's an abundant time for you. If you so choose to accept the invitation that you are being offered in order to move forward and make it do what it do. You know, it's time to end the karma of fear because you might miss it. Granted, there's always an opportunity always can to make something happen but at the same time um the door does close for some time and you have to wait because then you're going to have to go back and reflect on what it is that you didn't do still moseying on with old same old lessons again you know whatever lights you up is already with you this is something that you've been already doing been knowing, you've been wanting, desiring for a really long time, and it's time for you to get out and do that. If there's something that you had already started, do it. The time is opportune. It's it's fertile ground out here. Despite of what reality may make you believe your personal life, you are in control of that. It is up to you to so believe it. <clears throat> Oh, there it goes. My computer came on slow. <laughs> okay. Oh, the justice card you see. Y'all seen that file? I didn't, I didn't see it. You got the five of wands as well. So, justice is what I was talking about. Um, you're being in control of your reality and what happens and what that looks like. Right, so justice is about cause and effect. What you're doing will bring to fruition whatever result that you're putting in the work to. And you just have to do it, you know. So what are you going to choose to do? Are you going to continue to be in the clouds, in your mind, stuck in this place of fear? Or are you going to trust that you can make this happen? Perhaps this has a little bit to do with competition maybe whatever it is that you want to do it seems like many people are doing it but we are individuals who all have our own thing there in reality is no real competition you can do whatever it is that you want to do if you so put the effort into it if you so believe you know come into this balanced state of being we are in Libra season. This card is ruled by Libra. So this is the time right now to do whatever it is that you need to do. Don't be concerned. Don't let your ego get in the way and make you believe that somebody is going to have something to say about whatever it is that you choose to do. You got to just do that thing because anything else is just going to cause even more chaos in your world. You know, if you put in the effort, start putting in the effort right now, like you will probably start seeing some um, things manifest like in the next three months. What is it, October, November, December? So come the end of the year, the first of the year, January, perfect morning, winter time, like it's, it's that time. And you have to believe that it's time for that. It's time to. Yeah, let your experiences, don't let your experience, don't let your experiences deny you of what it is that you deserve. Don't let them psych you, literally psych you out of believing that it's possible for you or not possible to do what you want to do because 
it is, it's just here in consciousness right now. It's right now the doors are open. The justice card is an 11. That, that, that's the door. It's open for you. It's waiting for you to take that step and start putting in the work. Start mastering yourself in that role of whatever it is that you are attempting to manifest in your life because there is a lot of abundance behind what it is that you are trying to make happen. You just need to get into that place of believing it. Wield your sword wisely, you know. Cut out the noise. You seem to already be making it happen, so keep doing that. Don't be, don't let fear stop you. So, okay. Virgo, I hope that that was helpful. We're going to move on to Libra. Um, what was I about to say? Oh. If it did help you, please let me know in the comments um, because I would like to hear what's going on with you guys. So now, for real, we're going on to Libra. Libra, Libra, my lovely, beautiful Libra. Libra is such a beautiful people. Libra, Libra. Spirit, Pluto, guidance, insight, direction. What do you have? So Libra. Let's hear about Libra. So Libra. Um, Libra, you want to start connecting with your soul family, people who resonate with you, who get you, who you can, you know, that you don't have to explain yourself to, that you just pick the shit with whenever, however, and you can go and they can be there for you, whether that is emotionally, mentally, even uh, physically, you know, if you need help in trying to make things happen, but this is happening in your fourth house, so this may be talking directly about your family, or most of you connecting with people who feel like family, like, oh wow, I've been here before with these people, I love these people, I resonate with them, these my people, you know. Have fun. Have a good time with this. We got the hunter. So a cycle has ended for you. Let me read on the hunter. I don't pull this card often, so I'm not sure. So the hunter says, before the dawn of agriculture, we hunted in the forest to feed our kin. The hunter never takes more than what the village needs to survive, often taking only one creature, the good kill. He is a master tracker who knows which path to follow to find success. Rely, the invitation is to rely on your own skills to traverse the thick forest you are in to reach your destination. You need to follow the tracks left by spirit to claim your bounty, you, which is already prepared and being offered to you. Do not follow the maps drawn by others, as they will not lead you truly. Instead, become the map maker. Find your internal compass and use all your senses, including your common sense. The medicine also says to don't settle for roadkill. It could be poison. Be careful that you do not become prey of your desires and fantasies. Remember to not want more than you need, so you are not guided by unbridled ambition. It's okay to come home empty-handed. So... There are basically, it seems, first of all, you have the things that you need in order to make things go. You have the support of others as well. Your tribe is coming along to support you through this. You have what they need as well to offer to them because you have been on this journey. You've been seeing these things, you know, and it's it's almost like it's it's time to let the village feast off of what is off the sustenance and the abundance it is that you have to share with them. Don't deny yourself of not being who it is that you want to be because Libras, y'all are natural givers. Y'all love to give. Y'all love to share with others. Just be aware of not choosing a path that is 
beneath you. So that is basically really a need to take a look at yourself and recognize your worth and your value, right? Which is a lot of about the fourth house, but knowing who you are, being secure within yourself um, and recognizing what influence it is that you bring to others. You know, because there's so many different ways that you can go about doing whatever it is that you're doing. And any way is not the wrong way. No way is the wrong way. You know, every, any, any way that you choose, whatever you put in, as long as you enjoy it and have fun with it, it will manifest into what it is that you're desiring. But things are definitely changing um, with your home life, with your people who feel like kin to you, you know. These are solid people, people you can trust, and those who you can't, you're going to be able to tell right off the bat. It's not going to be a secret. You know, page of pentacles. So this is about making sure you are putting in the efforts, putting in the work, taking your time, not feeling, um, paying attention to the messages that are left for you, the guidance that's left for you. They a lot about the same with the hunter, you know, focus on the past, make, you have to build a map, and that starts with the page energy, because it's almost, you're ending something, so something new is beginning, so this is fresh, almost, I don't want to say newborn, but almost a man setting out to become, a boy setting out to become a man, a young girl setting out to become a woman, basically, you know, and really not letting your mind get in the way. Don't trust you with the highest trust of yourself. Again, that whole self-worth thing. Let go of any opinions, any burdens that hold you back, um, that don't allow you to move forward in a way that feels good, right? If it's anything that kind of... Um, creates a stagnant energy or needs more attention than what you can give to it, then you already know it's just, you know, mm -mm. just go where you're inspired, where you're pulled, not, don't continue to do things that burden you um, or make you believe that you're not doing something right because you are, you just have to um, do it and you have to make the map, write it down, make it real, start planning um, get practical, get organized on schedule, whatever you need to do. This may have to do with work, a work situation, but also more so of your mind, more than anything, in trusting, you know, having faith in uh, staying, keeping forward to your truth, you know, so that you can really make it do what it do. Because it, it's going to take time, but in reality, it's not going to take as much time as you think. You just have to put the effort in and um, believe in yourself that you can do it. So, Reaper, I hope that that was helpful. If so, let me know down in the comments. And we are moving on to Scorpio. Investigative Scorpio. <laughs> yeah, I love to get the bottom of things. I love that so much about Scorpio energy. I love Scorpios. And Pluto. Direction, insight, guidance. Please share for Scorpio. So, Scorpio, it seems like you still have some things that you need to sit with, get to, deal with within yourself. You got the inner temple. 
So you need to continue if you've already been doing your devotional work and connecting to spirit, connecting to your inner self, your heart space, your intuition. Continue to do that. If you have not been doing that, you need to start doing that. Now is the time because wherever you're going, you really need to let go of any type of old soul pattern that you've been continuing to hold on to, any type of relationship that don't serve you anymore, that kind of keep you in the book. Why am I shuffling this like this? Um, any type of contracts, whether that has to do with work, um, maybe relationships with your siblings need to change or have transformed and now you're just trying to figure out where to go with that, your immediate family, your perceptions have changed. Perhaps you need to let go of or have been letting go of some mental thought pattern that you have thought was true all this time and then come to find out they, they weren't what you thought they were. Right, the smoky mirror. So this is about um, being not really being able to see yourself clearly in a sense. What is this, an 11? It's some new space that you need to go forward into, but you were still holding on to old things. And not until you let these things go will you be able to show up in the way that you truly want to show up? Mirror work. That's the thing. If you know anything about that, that is the thing. Definitely something of the emotions, right? Because it has to do with the heart space. And you really have to go within to see, like, y'all are the masters of the deep. Be deep of your own shit. <laughs> not somebody else's. Yeah, we're definitely not taking those cards. Great to be able to see through other people's stuff, but it means nothing when you can't see through your own. Like you can't be going around telling people how they should be doing something if you're not doing a thing in a way that serves you, that's bringing benefits to your life. The Queen of Pentacles. So this has something to do with your reality, with what you desire for your, for your reality. Right, so going within is going to help you manifest the magician. This is something, something of the mind space needs to move, needs to be let go of. You need to go within so that you can utilize what it is that already lives within you to make something new, make something bigger, better, more beautiful. Something long lasting, practical, something, you know, this is the queens, any queens, all the queens in the deck. Um, they are inspired kind of thing. They are have already hold this knowing. They are intuitive. They are um, it lives within, you know. And in this picture, it looks like homegirl has her um, eyes closed, so she's within seeing what it is that she has, so she can utilize it in a way that will bring benefit to her reality. So this makes me want to talk about work and business, but also family. Perhaps you're feeling stuck in an area, or maybe you've seen where you were stuck and need to continue to do the work. Either way, it's something these things keep drawing you under and keeping you, pulling you in shadow. When in reality, it's time for you to come out and let the light from the shadow show and, and, and let that cast on others for whatever benefit it may be of them. Whether this is the people directly around you or others that you help. Because maybe you need to start also, 
Maybe it's somebody that you work with, network with, that you need to let go of or reframe your relationship with or see and perhaps you just need a new perception on where it is that you presently are in this moment so that what is trying to manifest can happen. But you first have to get out your own way. You have to continue to do the, dive, the deep diving to see yourself, to see what is, what is what, what is there, what is purposeful, and what is needed, what is not. So that you can let it go and move on. Because you have the power. You have the know-how. It's just all in a matter of you actively making this happen. Putting in the effort, the work. Efficiently and effectively juggling the things it is that you have without feeling like some sort of victim or without feeling like some sort of a victim or feeling like that you have too much to hold. But in reality, if it's ours, if it's in our reality, if it's in our presence, obviously we have the capacity to handle it because it's here. And that's something that you may need to remind yourself you know, it's time to take inspired action. These ideas, you need to act on them. And you need to not wait any longer and take the steps so that you can manifest and move through the fog. Let me see about smoking here. Feels like there's something else here. Smoky mirror represents the aspect of what is implied yet cannot be immediately known by the world. The mystery of how things come together and how they fall apart with obvious casualty. The symbol also represents the shadow of the human psyche, the parts of the self that one disowns. The smoky mirror can also represent a state of denial or the inability over people to see the truth. When the symbol of the smoky mirror appears, you're invited to see beyond your own self. Acknowledge that past the limits of your current ability to perceive, there is a vast interconnected world where events are orchestrated in divine order, but challengingly, challenging to fully grasp. Now is the time to trust that no matter what, what the current conditions of your world reflects in the hidden realms, all aspects of the human journey are celebrated. The beauty and the darkness the misery and the courage, no matter where you are in your journey, know that some things are meant to be a mystery, which you are now, which you are meant to understand only through experience. Take heart, for the smoky mirror will ultimately show you beauty and wonder once the fog lifts to the source you see now. The medicine here says understanding the shadow of the human journey requires that you go deep into your story to discover the wound that prevents you from seeing the truth of your current situation. Your fears and expectations of disappointment and unworthiness may be clouding your capacity to see the potential in yourself and others. The smoky mirror may be showing you things you don't want as a result of your condition. These can become even more real, but only because you are making it so. The choice is yours. The world will hold you accountable for what you see and create. Can you see through the eyes of truth and faith instead? Right, so that, that has a lot to do with those old contracts and soul patterns. Like we can't always villainize our circumstance and the people around us without actually seeing the truth, the fullness of what is available right in front of us, based out of whatever type of misconceptions, preconceptions, perceptions that we've been holding on to that are not aligned to the truth. So perhaps there has been some way that you have been thinking about your direct reality, whether it's your work, your family, your business, your love life, your children, whatever it is, what you it's something that you have learned that no longer is serving you and is blocking the sun from being seen in your life. Don't be so scorpionic all the time and wanna be all you know, oh, woe is me, this spare my life is terrible. 
because it's not, right? That's distortion. You are in control. Flick of the wrist. All you got to do is follow that. You know, listen to yourself. When you start trusting yourself, you'll be a happier person. When you start listening to the divine guidance that spirit is giving you, giving you, you'll be a happier person. When you start taking, when you stop taking your experiences at face value and truly see what it is that they have been there to offer you, will you be able to let go of those old patterns, content, past lives? Because that's what it's tied into. So if you are experiencing a reality that you are unhappy with right now, <laughs> You need to recognize that the power is within you, the flick of the wrist. You already have a know-how to really make what you have work, but to see the truth in that. See people for who they truly are and see your circumstances for who it is, that it, what it truly is. Grow up, really. That's, that's a lot of what this is because it's the whole... That it is a very um, space of immaturity to constantly be in this mind of victimization. You know, like you almost that you needed a sense of validation for what it is that you're doing, what you're choosing, and all of those things. In reality, you don't need that. You need to trust and you need to have faith that the choices that you have made up until this point has been what it is that you needed for you or doing what you need them to do for you if you so choose to pay attention to it and recognize the signs, recognize the symbols, recognize the the meanings that are hidden, hidden beyond the glamour, the illusion that has been created by the fog that you place over your mind, your mental state. Okay, Scorpio. I hope that was helpful. Let me know what's going on with you in the comments. We are headed down to Sagittarius. How about an adventure, Sagittarius? What do you guys have going on for this Pluto direct energy? Where, what do you want them to know? Sagittarius. Oh, Sagittarius. Continue to listen. To listen to that spot in you that is guiding you. Because you are creating heaven on earth. All right. Whatever steps you're taking, keep doing that. Because you're on the right path to the feeling that you desire in life. Because at the end of the day, that's really what all of this is about. How do we feel about what it is that we are experiencing? Like you're moving forward with the right mind. You're moving forward with the right feelings. You're taking the right steps. It's just believe that by continuing to trust you know obedience pays and it seems that you're listening and it's paying off for you utopia soon comes <laughs> for real A lot of y'all getting this completion card. So, yes, something has ended and you're creating something brand new. Something, a place you ain't never been before. Uh, a feeling you've never experienced before. A joy you've never had before. A happiness that you've never been able to cultivate in your reality before. This is going down. You know, and wherever you continue to be unsure, just continue to go within. Continue to do the healing work that needs to be done that is going to 
make the light light that is going to continue to complete whatever cycles so that you can continue to show up in this new skin and not revert to any old situations that have once um, held you in a space of unhappiness. You know? Yeah. You got a new perspective on life. And you're allowing that, using that to move forward. However, this new way of seeing things is supporting you and really activating and motivating you in trailblazing into the future that you want, that your heart desires. That That's happening. And you seem to have people who are there with you, who are helping you in creating this reality, who are building with you, who are willing to grow with you. You may even be starting something new when it comes to work. Finding new ways to make money for yourself. Feeling lighter. A lot less confusion than before as well, you know, in being very certain about where you're headed. You're very sure operating and moving forward in your truth, you know, taking the path for what it's worth and doing the work to move forward and expand on it. Yep, Sagittarius, you quick cut and dry. Not dry, but you know what I mean. You know, to the point. So let's, let me know how that has been helpful for you, Sagittarius. We are, oh, or just let me know what's going on and how that applies. We are moving on to Capricorn. My hard work in The bosses of the Zodiac. Aries trailblazers would not like Capricorn. Aries wishes it could be like Capricorn. <laughs> no, which is why Mars is exalted in Capricorn. But when an Aries and a Capricorn link up, you better know it's going down in whatever realm. Just okay, let's see what series of Pluto at the show today. Capricorn. Okay, so Capricorn, much like Aries, you need to get grounded, honey. Um, just get grounded, hard, highly sensitive. Most people don't know this, but Capricorns are highly sensitive people. <laughs> they are highly sensitive people, okay? And although they don't talk about their emotions, they have them in their deep. So, Capricorn is, you know, this, this stellium has really been affecting you on like a very personal, individual, identifying level. This has really, you are a different person. You are not the same person you started this year out as. You are not the same person that you have been over the past four years, eight years. Like, you're coming into this whole entirely new sense of perceiving how you perceive and perceiving others, being witnessed by others, being seen by others. You know, your health is getting better. Your life is getting better, feeling more joy. So, yeah. Everything was not for nothing. Okay. So, you have the spiral. You are basically coming and done. You know, a lot of changes. You need to really get grounded into this new space of being it is that you are in. That's really where your focus needs to be. So that means continuing to be proactive in the changes you have made so they can fit 
so they can become, so they can renew you, so you can become new, you know, and know that even if things continually to be slow moving and seemingly difficult, know that on the other side of that is something really great, but you have to trust the process. You're going to have to go down the rabbit hole as far as it has to take you in order for you to come out on the other side, the person it is that you are meant to be for this reality. That's just, it's just how it goes. You know, you can't, um, you, I don't have to tell you, you're okay with doing the work. Do that. Continue to do that. And if it's discouraging you, um, you choose to see things in a way that it's because it's needed. Things don't happen unless they need to happen, right? So this is even something bad. Like, if something we don't want happens, that's because we wasn't paying attention to something. So now you have the opportunity to recognize where you can slack in. Slipping on your pimping and where you need to show up for yourself because this is really all for yourself. This really isn't about anybody else. It's time for you to really get grounded in yourself, feel calm within yourself. You know, be sure of who it is that you are and be confident in that. Don't let don't let confusion uh, create discord in your life. Because if you don't know where you're going, just trust that you're going in the right direction. You know, you're going to have to say it's still more work that needs to be done. You're going to have to continue to stand up in the face of your foes, man. You know, you're going to have to... Um, You have the ability to. That's really what the Seven of Wands is saying. Like you, you have the power. You have the girth. You have the energy to withstand anything that comes your way. It's just up to you to do that, All right? Because you are building something new, brand new. This is Capricorn energy. This Ace of Pentacles. You're planting new seeds. It's fertile ground, okay? And you just need to tend to it. She has this hole in her hand. Right, she is not a pinnacle, but it's a wand. All right, and that means it's action. You need to put some life behind it. You need to be um, inspired. You need to have, operate from a sense of a place of passion, a, a place of deep desire, of a longing, you know, and allow this ace of pinnacles energy to activate within you so that you can show up and let. The fruit grow. Nurture what needs to be nurtured. Yourself, which is you. Right? It's all about you. Release the, the illusion that so this Capricorn. This is all about you. You know, make continue to make the the, the changes that are happening because you are being broken open, you know. Capricorn is that energy that really, um, it wears a lot of masks because it's busy trying to get it done. You know, it's busy trying to make it happen, be successful. And you will be. You just have to trust that all of these changes that are happening are necessary, right? And continuing to flow with them. And accepting them from a, you know, a pure heart. Um, and just continuing to be courageous in where it is that you are headed. So that is it for you, Capricorn. I hope that that was helpful. So I just feel like Capricorn was very easy energy. But we are moving on to Aquarius. Aquarius, let's see what you have going on with this Pluto going direct, spirit, insight, guidance, direction for Aquarius. What do you need them to know? What would you like for Aquarius to know? Aquarius. 
Aquarius. Mm. So you got boundaries, which I believe is what Taurus oversees. Can't remember. But with this happening in the 12th house, right? So the 12th house is the house of Pisces and Neptune. And that is like a boundless kind of energy. So what I want to say is I think it feels like that you have been holding yourself in some type of imprisonment in your mind, in your heart, that has been blocking you from being able to really make and manifest from a soul core level what it is that you truly want for yourself, for your life, what feels natural to you, what feels right to you. But it's important that you stop being so independent in a sense. Stop being so detached from the people around you who are there to help you. Stop feeling like somebody is out to get you. Stop feeling like people are not there for you when they are. It's like a need to stop taking things so personally because 12 House is very sensitive, right? So you may have yourself caught up in all of these misconceptions of what's really happening in your reality and why they're happening. How and why they're happening. So ask the people who you feel like you can trust to give you a hand because they're there. I don't know who it is, you know, they are there. Right, that's a vision quest. vision quest so this is about bringing balance and harmony to where it is that you're headed let me read this don't get this card often so i don't i don't think i've ever read this card before So it says, in the vision quest, you face your fear, embrace your mortality, and then face to face, meet face to face with spirit. When we feel stagnant, a vision quest brings our lives into perspective. We realize our flaws, our potential, and opportunities life is now offering us. We remain on a vision quest until we find the key to open a new door or write a new chapter in our lives. The invitation is to find clarity by spending time alone in nature. If you live in a city, go for walks in the park. If you live in the country, make sure you spend time outside in contemplation. Get off the couch. Get away from your desk outside. Spirit help those who help themselves. So set intentions and ask nature for a guiding vision for your life. The medicine says, Spirit has been trying to contact you but receive no answer. You are too busy with your life and there is too much noise inside your head. Do not miss the call again. Make room for quiet time this evening. Allow yourself to become bored for a little while and you'll be able to hear the important messages trying to get through. And that's another thing I want to say, distraction. <clears throat> it seems like you may be trying to escape your reality through, through distractions, whether it's a distraction of television, food, your family, other people. You really need to go within because the 12th house is an internal house. It is your spirit self. It is your ethereal self, that intangibility of who it is that you are, what can only be witnessed through the action of you, right? It's not something that anybody can actually describe. And being in that is having you out of the flow that is possible. Perhaps you've kind of been feeling like a victim in your whole entire experience of life and that's what's bounded you not trusting anyone not um feeling safe to connect with anyone probably thinking because when you're in this space of victimization if you victimize yourself in one thing you're doing it all over right and most of the time this comes up in, in blaming other people but this is also feeling like somebody may be um, being uh, 
this is you complaining with other people's perspective about how you how your life should be, right? Or thinking it creates it creates a lot of false narratives, right? It creates a lot of distortion in in the reality, you know, but it's really time for you to be quiet and go within. Perhaps you been able to recognize and see yourself during this time that Pluto was in retrograde that oh shit this is me my life is like this because of me that's it so now it's like what do you need to do so ask people who have been there yeah yeah wow Aquarius all right so you may need to find a teacher somebody who can guide you but um Four cups, then in a space of like apathy, a space of boredom, but also maybe you've been attempting to gain or have come into this space of uh, this new self awareness that you never had before. And that's why you're at this aha moment like, oh my goodness, I did this. So the Ten of Swords comes in and it's like, okay, let's do this root work. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's rebirth this world of ours. Let's make it what we want. Let's jump into this flow and see where this current is going to take us. And, you know, let's do this. You are really advised with this being a 12 house matter that you find someone who can give you guidance in where it is you're going, who can facilitate you in the steps it is that you need to take to do this shadow work. Right, because this is all about in the darkness for you. This is about karma, past life karma that you brought over here with you that it's time to release, it's time to let go of. So this is this is something familial as well, something that you this is learned behavior, you know, through um passed down through the lineage, you know, so all the debt that you're experiencing, all the fear that you're experiencing, it's not yours. So you need to figure out what this looks like within you so that you can start releasing this and create a new blueprint for your life. You need to connect with someone who's going to help you tap into your higher mind who's going to help you tap into seeing the truth of you, you know, because this, this, this kind of thing is not something that you can go about doing by yourself because we can get caught up in deceiving ourselves from what is really true out of an ego standpoint of not wanting to take responsibility for where our lives have become because of the choices that we have made. And I get it. It's fine. We didn't all been there, you know? It's just time to do the work for real, the real work, not the surface work of I did this, I did that. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You know, it, it's much it's much deeper than than rap. <laughs> much deeper. Um don't get caught up in all that, you know, because Oh wow, you're so supportive. You're so supportive. You have people around you who are willing and open to help. They, you know, they just like, hey, whenever I'm here, whenever you need me, <laughs> hit some people up who tell you that. Because those are probably the people who are going to be the best guides that you. That are going to support you in moving forward. So, Aquarius, I hope that's been helpful. If so, let me know. Let me know what's going on with you. But we are moving on to Pisces, last but not least. Pisces, our watery babies. Pisces, Pisces. Spirit, Pluto. Insight, guidance, direction. What is it that you would like? For Pisces to know with this Pluto direct energy. Pluto direct for Pisces. Pisces. Pisces, Pisces.
Y'all looked at this timer like, oh, did I not press play? Mm -hmm. Pisces. All right, Pisces. So it's time to release. It's time for you to come up out the shadows. You seem to still have been tied to some old soul patterns. Some you still have had been holding on to some old contracts that you came into this life with, some old past life doings that you're meant to do away with in this life. It's time to let those things go. These are the things that create chaos, confusion, and in all of that in your your goals, reaching those goals. So perhaps you've been working on these things to get there within you. This is your friendships, your groups, the organizations you take part of, your efforts in helping others. You know, you have help in the subtle realms. Everything that has happened for you has been in the, the a divine orchestration. Your spirit team created that for you so that you can see what needs to be released. The owl. And through this, you now have the wisdom to carry forward, you know, and really make the choices and decisions and connections and meet whatever goals it is that you were trying to meet. What is this? Nine, three. That's a 12, three. So, yeah, you have recognized how it is that what these soul patterns that you've brought in with you, how they have been the catalyst of creating your reality. You are now harvesting that wisdom in that, you know, and it is time to actively release, like fully release these things. Come into being of yourself, of your truth, you know. Even if others don't agree with that. Because whatever relationships that these old soul patterns created, um, you know, again, they were divinely orchestrated. They were here to offer you the wisdom that's going to give you the guidance you need to move forward and create the reality that you desire for yourself, right? You are coming into wholeness of yourself, this independent nature. You got the lover's card and the nine of pentacles, really doing things on your own, you know, and recognizing what it means to uh, really be capable of your own energy. Now, this could also be a relationship um, in how you need to recognize your own independent nature within your relationships instead of trying to do things the Piscean way and readily bind to everything and everyone that you come in contact with. Because in reality, that's just not sustainable for your happiness, your fulfillment, and your health, you know? Um, this is also about, yeah, this is a lot about your relationships, but also your sense of wholeness and recognizing and seeing who it is that you are and, and being okay with that, feeling fulfilled in your natural nature. Being in alignment of your heart and your mind. And allowing that to bring harmony into your world. You know, and kind of getting out of the clouds of deceiving yourself. Um, whether that is you seeing yourself incorrectly, other people incorrectly, a job incorrectly, um, another person's beliefs incorrectly. Um, whether that is for the good or the bad, however it is, you know, it's really, at the end of the day, it's up for you to choose how something aligns for you. Like I said, for 
I don't remember who that was for, but um, I had mentioned that toxicity, what's toxic for one person may not be toxic for another. You know, some people may uh, fluidly function in something that somebody is uh, torn down by, you know, so in, you know, that's just a, our individuality thing. But that does that still does not make us separate because we are all one. You know, we're all inhabiting some experience. Okay, sorry. That's chicken on my side. <laughs> but um yes, I mean it is, you know, it is you will still be in the space of continuing to learn more about yourself, continuing to release what is no longer yours. It has never been there. It has come as this conspiracy. It has been offered to you through your family. You know, these lessons it is that you have to learn in order to really glow up, you know, and really be that um, unconditionally loving, present person that you love to be. Um, you know, and operating from this space of what is you? Who is you? You know? So, Pisces, I hope that this was helpful. If so, let me know down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Um, let me know what's going on. And for those who watch this video all the way through, yeah, don't forget to like, share this if it's been helpful. Let it, share, let it help somebody else. Subscribe to my channel, click the notification bell so you can see when my videos pop up for you. And I hope that this has been helpful to all of you all. Like, please let me know what's going on and how you're feeling on this time. Do you feel lighter? Do you feel like you have a little bit more energy to move forward in the space that you have been feeling um, delayed or blocked? Like, what's going on? So that is all for me. You will also be receiving a Venus and Virgo ticket card that won't just be on love. So I will talk to you guys very soon. And I hope that y'all have a wonderful rest of the year and that this Capricorn energy helps you just really make it happen. Okay? So. I'm sending you all my love and so many blessings. Bye.